Hi, I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, Presbyterian Minister of Three Congregations in Eastern Ontario, and I'm also the questioning pastor. Today's question is, what is a Christian worldview? Now, for some of you, you, you might be asking, what is a worldview? A worldview is basically the way you look at the world. And it's, you know, things happen and we have to process what happens. We have to try to make sense out of it or understand how. It, and our values, our belief system, our they, they shape our sense of what normal is and help us interpret these events that happen in our life. So that's the worldview. And a lot of times it's unconscious. So let me give you an example of how unconscious this worldview can be. I uh, remember years ago when residential schools first get, started getting attention in the media and the CBC was doing uh, some special about a residential school somewhere and they were interviewing the nuns who ran the school. And they were asking, you know, why did you take the children away? And it was because the parents were migratory. So they would be uh, living in the bush for so many months of the year and the kids couldn't get from the bush back to the school every day. They might show up two or three days and then they'd be gone for a week. So, and then they'd show up again. And of course they've forgotten whatever they've learned. So it made sense to get the kids staying in the schools while the parents were in the bush. And then the, uh, a reporter asked, well, did the parents ever live in the settlement? And yeah, they did in the summertime. Well, why didn't you have school in the summer? And the look on the nuns' face, faces, they, they've never considered the possibility. School is from September to June. And the fall is when the families would basically go back in the bush. They never thought they could adjust the school year to when the kids were actually living with their parents in the community. That's the worldview. It's something that we think is so obvious we never even question it. There are many, many different worldviews out there. And today I'm gonna to talk about two, a secular worldview and a Christian worldview. Now I know there are variations of secular and variations of Christian, but I'm going to just sort of give you uh, the strongest contrast between them. So a secular worldview basically says, God doesn't exist. So there is no sense of purpose or meaning in life. Things happen purely by chance. You know, the roll of the dice, you're tough luck to get this or you're tough luck to get that. So there's basically no plan, no meaning, no purpose to life. It's not surprising that a lot of people get depressed when bad things happen. There's nothing to support them. And then you go, there's really, the only thing that's important or the only way to survive in such a reality is to focus on yourself. Make sure you're okay, that you get the best you can and get whatever you can to make sure you're safe or you're protected or you've got the resources you need to survive because there's nothing else except you and chance. Now, thankfully, there are many people who do believe in community and helping others, but in a secular worldview, it's not necessary because why would you bother to help anyone else? Um, you have to answer that question. And for many secular people is, they're the only ones that count. We call it narcissists, but why would you think of anything different? Now, in a religious worldview, and um, it's exactly the opposite. We do believe there is something more than this life. There is life after death. There could be new life. We might come back again in reincarnation, or maybe we go to heaven. There's variations. And there is meaning. There are standards, good and bad, that are independent of us. So that's sort of a near religious worldview right there. Now in a Christian worldview, we go further. We have a very clear picture. Not only is there uh, 
uh, life after death, not only are there standards, but we have God who's created everything, who is actually in control of everything. Now that leaves open the question of why do bad things happen and all that kind of stuff, which we'll deal with in other questions. But God has a plan. He's created the world with a purpose. He's created us to be in community. Basically, it's not good for us to be by ourselves. He's given us um, rules to live by, to live in harmony with one another. And he's given us uh, uh, hope, okay? Bad things happen, but we have a support system. Um, it's not all up to us. We can get help from others. We can provide help to others. He judges us not by how much we have, or even how much we've accomplished. He judges us by our character and our sense of compassion, our sense of right and wrong. Our, he judges people by some of those inner qualities. And it's not by your social status, how rich you are, how poor you are, whether you're male or female, whether you're white, black, purple or whatever, none of that matters. It, what matters is what's on the inside and ultimately how we help and support one another. And then we believe as Christians that God is love and he came to show us a way of love. And it is, well, it's pretty good. And I was talking about it last week of what does Christianity offer today. And it's basically is all of that. When we look at the world, we see goodness in the world. We see good things, good people, beauty. And it's not all about us. And we're sort of there going, wow. And we find hope even in the midst of bad things. And we find um and it's not blind hope, okay? It's, it's a presence. It's, but it's just knowing that there is God. There are standards. There are, um, we're forgiven when we fail. That there's a plan where everything's going to come together. Uh, when the bad people and all the bad things are going to be destroyed. Yes, we have that sense too. So which one's real? I guess it depends where you are. If you don't believe in God, then maybe the idea that there is nothing to life is the real one. If you believe in God, then, then the whole idea of the world is changed. I can't tell you which is the truth, okay? You have to find your own truth, but I know which is the truth to me because I've experienced it. But is that the ultimate truth? Who knows? We are caught in our cycle of life. We can know only what we discover in our lives or experience in our lives. And the best we do is trying to make sense out of it because that's what a worldview is. So. What worldview do you want to follow or do you want to explore? I hope it's a Christian one because we have a lot to offer. So once again, I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver and thank you for joining us for this morning's Questioning Pastor. Take care and God bless. <music>